what is going on guys how are you doing this is rory here at rory wellburn gaming i am giving my overview on a hunting simulation game called way of the hunter make sure you guys are hitting that subscription button hitting the like there as well and that will notify you guys every time i do put new content out there or potentially are uh, going live so all said and done this is compared a lot to other hunting simulation games out there i.e call of the wild big game hunter etc etc it is nowhere near i believe either of those games this is something else way of the hunter is a lot of stalking your prey knowing their need zones knowing their rest zones it is very very complex the maps are absolutely huge two maps to choose from as right now um we do have idaho map which is called nespez valley also as well um over in europe there is also the transylvania map in this map right now we do have white tail we do have elk uh black bear which is the american black bear uh moose um badgers foxes um there's quite a good show of animals in the game the big thing with the animals in the game as well there is a big thing that you do have to conserve in game which is basically conservation now conservation being that you have to control your herds you've basically got to go to a male to female ratio try to have basically maybe one or two more males to the females if they are young keep them in there but depending again if they are a young fitness the young fitness will determine how they are going to pursue later on into the game so th basically a one young uh, they could basically have a very high um fitness level so being the fitness level being high they could potentially grow up to be a five star mature that is what you are going out there to achieve you're going out there to get the best of the best which is obviously going to be the bucks or the stags in either of your animals so all being said and done let's give you guys a quick run through of what we've got or what we know up to now so in menu what we are pulling up is we've got your map which again you can see i've done quite a lot of this now i've nearly got 200 hours into this game um the ones that will be blanked out at the start of your guys coming into the game is she devil um also falls reservoir as well as diamond drill and Halliwitch. these will be basically saying uh permission to hunt required you can as well go into the shop and buy the passes to hunt in these games and you've always got to say to yourself well why are they restricted restriction means these are the best areas to be hunting in so I would personally, if I was you, I would basically be saying, go through the full story of the game. Make sure that you guys are getting the story done. Quite a detailed story as well. I've getting all the story finished, um, but we're not obviously going to go into the story. I don't want to give you guys any spoilers. So as once you get stories completed, you are going to be laughing into hunting into these big places where you have got very good and high fitness of animals so as what i'm led to believe i think these map sizes are around about 55 square kilometers and um, this map as a, what i'm showing you right now is a place called nespez valley and this is in idaho america and the other map as i did say transylvania over in europe so what you're starting off with at the beginning of the game you'll start off in the story which will basically be a 30 30 under lever rifle um it will ask you to go and basically get customized with the gun 
and the more that you do progress into the game it will obviously unlock more in your character which is your rifle perks um shotgun perks and obviously your hunting perks these hunting perks are key they need to be leveled up i still have myself quite a few left to do uh which is the explorer traveling 100 kilometers in a vehicle um, then 150 kilometers in a vehicle and again collect all transylvania collectibles we haven't done much of transylvania so i haven't getting the collectibles done and then we've got strategists as well which is hit a heart either lung or artery 50 times from a hunting stand quite i wouldn't say hard to do it is just more time consuming to do so this game again as i've just said time consuming don't be expecting on this game think of it as real life hunting if you guys have ever gone out in the real world and hunted you are going to know exactly what this game is all about everything is taken into consideration your wind noise your positioning the position of the animal the condition of the animal all of those factors are taken into consideration so like i said make sure you guys do try and focus quite a lot into getting these um perks leveled up and honestly the game will become a breeze so again map huge your objectives these will be all of your missions so you can see obviously down here i'm trying not to show you too much um, because i don't want to ruin it for you guys who are doing the story but two of the tasks i've got right now taste of the world are you a lumberjack we're not really bothered about those as yet but i'm going to get into the game and show you as much as as much of knowledge as what i actually know so encyclopedia this is a good thing as well this will tell you anything from your attachments um basically the sway of the rifle the recoil what optics you can use your binocular description as well um you will be basically given a default well not a default but a very cheap um pair of binoculars one thing i would like to see come into the game very soon is a variable zoom binocular um this at the moment i believe the zoom is a little bit too much for the binoculars especially uh when you do have animals around about 150 yards in front of you it can be quite overpowering next um calibers so this is the calibers of your rifles and your shotguns so we'll quickly go to the firearms so firearms are starting off with a remington 783 and this is a bolt action 243 win mag or oh, sorry not win mag just win so win standing for winchester this is a hunting tier 5 rifle now a lot of people are going to get confused into looking at the hunting tier and then looking at the animals so quickly from firearms to animals so for example we shall go to the whitetail deer so the whitetail deer it's saying hunting tier five so a lot of people are going to look at that and go well hunting tier five animal a hunting tier five rifle is going to work not necessarily so going back to the firearms again we have got to look at what the jewels of this rifle will put out and speaking of jewels is basically the energy of that bullet so the energy has got to be taken into consideration so i'm going to show you what i mean by jewels so looking at the rifle now so getting rifle out and we shall pull i think i have at the moment this is a 243 i believe what rifle do i have um oh, i need to go inside need to go inside we'll quickly get in there right so here we are so yeah remington 783 we do have which is a 243 rifle and then also i have the 300 win mag which again stands for winchester magnum 
So the 243, go back outside, is... Again, this is going to change, obviously, the closer you are to the further away you are. So we're going to activate Hunting Sense. Hunting Sense is a very, very clever tool. Basically, what that does is it will determine of what animal you're going to be looking at more so through your binoculars. As well, you will see bubbles appear on your screen. These bubbles being that there is an animal present by basically either being spooked, being calm. Generally, when they're calm, they're given a audible call, basically communicating with each other, if that makes sense. So there. At round about 500 yards we are there, we are at 2,200 joules of energy. So looking at that, we basically zoomed into that little bush there. 2,200 joules of energy. Now, if we go to here, which is round about 17 yards, we are on 3,000 joules of energy. Just over 3,000 joules of energy. So the more you zoom away, this is basically just physics the more you're away the less powerful that bullet is going to be so the closer you are the more you're going to get from that bullet the further away you are the less you're going to get from the bullet but if we go to the bigger rifle which is the 300 win mag we look again out this is producing nearly 4,000 joules of energy again coming back to that bush so 4,000 joules of energy out there. It's 500 yards. Come round about again, back at 17 yards with 4,700. So again, the further away to the closer you are, all determines on how hard that is going to hit your animal. So going back to the animals again. So back to Encyclopedia, animals. Now, in the animals, it's given you, as you can see, a recommended hit energy. Now, this is key. This is key to all of your rifles and to the animals that you're shooting. So, one I have learned, which I thought, Grey Wolf, looking at it, it says hunting tier 5. So, hunting tier 5, and then you look at that and say, recommended hit energy of 1,165 to 3,029 joules of energy. Now, I used to use the rifle, which is the 308. Now, the 308 is a tier 5 rifle. So, I'm going to quickly pull the 308 out and show you this. So, we'll go to storage. Go down to the style Monoblanc, which is 308. Win. And this also, again, does have a very, very high-powered scope on there. So, this... There, look look at the power in the top right-hand corner. Look at the energy. 4,165. That is out. It's 500 yards. Back again to the encyclopedia. So, we go to animals. And back down to tier 5. So, looking at tier 5, Grey Wolf... 1,165 to 3,029. This rifle is way, way, way overkill. And by meaning overkill, chat, you are going to do a lot of damage to your animals. You're going to do a lot of damage to your animals. Please try and use the rifle adequate for the animal that you're shooting. Don't go out there. It is not a slaughter fest. Have etiquette. As what you would out there in the real world, do it properly. Basically, what you're doing in this game, do as what you were doing out in the real world. Everything, and I mean everything, that is down to your shots. Don't go in with head shots. Don't go in with neck shots. Don't go in with spine shots. Make sure you are hitting that engine room. The engine room being the heart and lungs try and get hard shot try and get those double lung shots and it will save on dragon next you can use mouse and keyboard you can use controller this is entirely down to what you guys do feel comfortable with personally myself i've always been a controller player 
So I do like a controller. Everything basically in both hands at once. Um, what else do we need to know? Again, in the store, I mean, you can see I've got 56,762 uh, credits. I don't know if it is dollars or just the in-game currency. But when you go to back into the store for trying to spend the money, I hope these guys over at um, Nine Rock Games do implement something else in to spend these credits. I would personally like to see it being that we have to buy ammo. Um, I don't know what else could be put in there. Again, cars. I would personally say as well, if you're gonna go, gonna be constantly using cars, buy them. Ma make it. Don't make it easier to travel from one place to the next. If you were gonna constantly abuse the spawn system of the cars, you should have to buy them. That's just my thought. Do let me know down in the comments. Let me know if you think ah, Rory, you're wrong. I wouldn't do that. Sleeping. How long would you like to rest? This all depends on your need zones. Now, speaking of need zones, I'll quickly show you these. Need zones. Go to your map. You are going to go around and explore everywhere. And I mean everywhere. The darker parts, what you see on my map at present, are places where I have not explored as yet. But I will. Later on in videos, chat. I will basically have all of this blanked out so going to an animal well basically you're going to be starting from here on this map so we'll go south so mule deer right so mule deer they have need zones need zones being they will need to drink they will need to eat and they will need to rest so going back to the encyclopedia go back to your animals scroll down so we're going to go to Mule Deer, what we've just looked at. So this is their life cycle. This is basically how they are going to progress around those need zones. You look at the time starting from 12 midnight, which they will be resting from. Then from 12 midnight till 5 a.m., they are going to be feeding. So then from feeding from 5 a.m. till 9 a.m., then they will be drinking from 9 a.m. till 1 p.m., Resting from 1 p.m. till 5 p.m. And then feeding from 5 p.m. till 10 p.m. 10 p.m. onwards, they will be drinking to go back to rest. So always think to yourself, we'll quickly go back, look at the time. Our time right now is 16.32. So where would you think there will be at 16.32? Go again to Mule Deer. So at 1632, they should be basically heading from their rest zone to a feed zone. So in the feed zone, we've got to go back to where we were on the mule, which is there. So as present, I haven't found their rest zone. So basically, we've got two of their feeds, which one is going to be often and the one is going to be rarely. So the often one is the one where you want to be. At the moment, there's nothing on the user interface to say what we know is the often or the rarely. You are going to have to basically go straight there. Is that going to say often? We'll, we shall go and find out. I'll try and get her a little bit. I'll try and get her one a little bit closer. So say this one. There we go. So there or there, right? So 243, I've got a rifle which is more than adequate of doing this. So we'll go to one of those rests. We'll put, sorry, one of those feeds. So we'll put a marker down on both. My place a marker, blue marker, and blue marker. Don't just look at in that triangle as well. That's where they're going to be. It can be quite a big range around that area, but they will be round there somewhere. So 400 and... 20 yards is one, and the next one is round about 600 yards away. So, walking down with Hunter Sense activated. Make sure a lot of people say try not to have Hunter Sense activated 
because it makes the outer part of your screen look very, very blurry. I can live with that because what I struggle to find in the game at present is that the animals don't seem to be audible enough. We can feel as so when the hunter sense is activated, you will not hear that animal make a noise. One key thing to know is if you hear a branch snap, branch, twig, whatever you want to call it, you hear that snap, stand still. Then quickly just turn around and see where that white bubble is going to appear from. If that branch, if there's not a white bubble around, it's just Mother Nature creaking. So we'll go down to the 275 marker first. Just take your time. Don't run. There. So we got a call. That call is Fox. Now, that Fox has alerted us. She's a female Fox. Don't shoot the females. Even though these are pests, what you want to try and do is get the chain moving on. Basically... Breeding, let the males breed with the females. Try not unless it stipulates in missions or in tasks that you do have to take females out. Don't do it. Don't take females out. So we're not bothered about her at all. We're just going to simply walk straight past her. She runs, which she will. She's not going to sit there and go, Hey, Rory, how are you doing, buddy? Nice to meet you. So she's over there. There she is. She's running. Right or left. So, right. What I've learned as well, it's round about 370 yards as a fox runs past us. It's round about 370 yards that the animals are going to pick you up from. So, right now, looking down in the bottom right-hand corner, unfortunately, you probably can't see that because of my logo, uh, but down in the bottom right-hand corner is three boxes. One is showing your ammunition count. The other is showing your stance. May you be stood up, uh, crouched, or obviously prone. It will show one of those. And the next one to the right of that is a wind direction. And also, it is giving you the speed of the wind. So, as right now, we've got a head-on wind. The wind is blowing basically straight into our face. And it is running at 45 feet per second looking on your map i didn't know this until maybe a week or two ago if you can just basically see just on the road there's a little purple shadow so it looks a little bit purple smoke that is how far your scent has traveled <clears throat> also it's giving you the direction so if an animal is obviously behind you and it shouts that is if it is anywhere within that purple smoke or fog, whatever you want to call it, that animal is going to smell you. Two key, two key senses from animals are hearing and smell. Eyesight on a lot of animals are not the best. So two things to always take in, smell and hearing. So like I said, round about 370 to 380 yards you will be heard from by animals. So try and keep it a steady walk. It's not a running game. You've got to be very, very careful. Very, very careful into how you approach this. So we know down here that there's a feed zone. So rather, rather than run around with your rifle as well, um, I might have the wrong callers on for this. I hope not. So quickly, just scour the area just nice and slow. Pheasants popped up, which we don't have anything for pheasant right now. You can only carry two weapons, one being a shotgun, one being a rifle. Two rifles, two shotguns. That is entirely your choice how you choose to play the game. If you're going out to predominantly just to shoot pheasant, have shotguns. So, is this what we have got right in front of us? Is this the mule deer feeding zone? We are then now going to deter... There they are. So I told you. 
So that two star mature. That's how easy it is to spook. So knowing right now that the meal deal were here, self-explanatory, if this does say rarely, I basically don't know the game at all. There you go. Meal day up in the top right hand corner, showing as often. So as we spook them, basically they were stood literally round about there, um, which was a little bit of a boo-boo. I would have basically liked to show you exactly where to show those deer. But we potentially could be getting on them on. Do hang about. They as well. So now that we know they're coming here, they've basically ran in that direction. What you can do, you can either go and stalk back into these animals by basically pursuing on the direction that they went to. Or... Do what I do, which I like to do this a lot. Basically, I just basically like to ambush them. So by meaning, wait. Just find yourself a nice comfy little spot. Lay down. And just watch in that direction. Now, you're going to be saying, well, Rory, how long does it take for them to come back? This could be anything real time. And take this into consideration. Real time. They're not just going to run away and go, oh, the... That was nothing back there. Nothing scared me. They've basically got to get that confidence back in themselves to come back. So, you probably need to be waiting around about 15 to 20 minutes. Do I want you guys to be sat waiting 15, 20 minutes watching this tutorial video? No. So, what were you going to do? So, you now know that that is how your need zones work. Need zones all work by time. Always give maybe round about an hour before the time or an hour after the time don't always say to yourself oh here we go chat here we go here we go we'll just stand up a little bit because i do right so they these must be very hungry so they want to come back so there as what i said to you at the beginning of this video so we've got 100 cents on You've seen that one star young male. Don't shoot him. Young is going to produce, hopefully, good stock later on into the game. You're going to end up with a good herd. Now, I can call these. You are going to start off with the very basics on your caller. There is three levels on certain callers. You will only have your first level until you unlock those perks. What I showed you at the beginning of the video. You will only have one call. Which that one call on the caller that we're going to use. Which is a grunt caller. There you go. D grunt caller. You will only be able to call in females. Now I have got th the three unlocked. So you can basically be going door grunt. Attracts female. Trophy buck grunt. That's the third part which attracts high fitness males, they are going to be your four and five stars. If you if you see a one star coming towards you with a high fitness male, do not shoot him. Low fitness. This is what you want to be going by. So let's see out of this herd of mule deers if there is any low fitness males. So one call, if you look down at the bottom of your screen as well, you will see the way the bar is moving up. You'll see a little arrow moving. It goes from a light gray to a very prominent white. I always wait until it gets to that prominent white before calling a second time. I don't know if it is how we are supposed to use the game or use the caller in-game, but this is what I have learned from it. I always basically let it go grey. As once it's out of the grey, call then to the white. So while you have the caller to your mouth, you're basically going, well, I can't see anything or hearing anything calling back. So if you, t again, we'll wait till it gets to the white part of the caller. I shall call. Quickly, take it back out of your mouth. 
and then obviously scour again if something is generally interested they will shout back now have these mule deer actually gone further on or are they no they're still down there so there we can see just the head there of that two star mature now it's got me a little bit concerned of why it is not coming back now that meaning it's not a low fitness in my opinion it is not a low fitness mature male or is he just that little bit too far away callers what i've learned as well the effective range of the caller is around about 218 yards two 220 so say 220 and below that is where your caller is working from uh, do correct me if i'm wrong do let me know down in the comments down below um but what i've worked out is around about 218 yards i might need to push a little bit further forward we'll just have a quick look is he coming how far is he away he's 160 yards so we could change the call here i should basically do this for the purpose of the video so he's not interested in the low fitness male grunt so basically low fitness meaning they are basically near their end of life if that makes sense so oh excuse me so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the high fitness male see if it attracts him with this generally it'll take around about two calls to entice him over so again back to the binoculars just a quick look see if he is sort of interested that one star young male is here we go look see so this potentially right he has got very good genetics i always say around about 55 percent or below now i'm going to lay down here because i do want to get a good shot on him so yeah he is coming as a high fitness male which basically meaning he could potentially become a four to five star animal right get rifle out so we're going to show this with the two four oh no this is a monoblanc right so as well a lot of people say what is the best way to take this shot as you have an animal approaching you do you go for the center heart center chest shot no don't because there's always the risk of missing that heart you can be a very very good marksman but there's always that chance of missing the heart what i generally do is i stop calling now i need to get him a little bit closer because when they stop walking what they'll do is basically turn away let's stand up a little bit see so now again we need him to get close he will go on the broadside shot he can't see us he can't smell us but if we move too much he will hear us so again he's going to stop very soon so we'll get that deer caller back out call him again now i'm not going to call him no more because what i want him to do is go broadside so we're going to get that 308 monoblanc out 77 yards is at so 54 yards of your zeroing zeroing is more than enough so basically what i want him to do is go broadside and i'm going to show you if i can before he quickly runs off exactly where to place your shot placing your shot is basically straight at the top of the shoulder now what i want him to do round about here is basically turn stop now he shouted now he'll turn broadside because he's not getting another call back 
now he should I don't know which way he's going to turn if he's going to turn right to left or left to right there he goes there's our broadside bang straight at the top of the shoulder you've seen exactly where I put that that is a double lung potential hard shot there to be fair so yeah straight down straight down that's exactly where you need to put that bullet that is what is called the engine room so very successful there i am very happy with that so just leave your hunting sense on one other thing especially that was close but especially over distance see you shot the day near that tree make sure you put a marker at that tree or you will see the blood splatter on the floor make sure you put a marker there i can't stress how many times i have not put a marker down and i've ran towards that tree and when i get there i say where's the blood gone i can't find it so make sure you put a marker down where you initially took your first shot and then follow your blood tracks so here this meaning so basically you're clicking on to analyze the blood um looking in the top right hand corner you'll see that the blood color is pink pink mean you have hit the lungs that is a good shot amount lots of blood that's what we want impurities air bubbles basically meaning air again is from the lungs time to expire fast this basically means your animal is going to die fast. And you should basically distance before expiration. It should be basically dead from 0 to 54 yards. That's what I'm led. Them two are led to believe in the blood trail origin analysis. So again, with Hunt and Sense on, we know where it's fell. But with Hunt and Sense on, just keep following these glowing blood spots there's quite a lot there but they can become a little more faint uh, basically by not mean a lot of blood but in the blood as well if this goes to red you have not killed the animal so when you come to analyze the blood if it is pink it is going to die if it is red it will not die you have got to get back onto that animal and put it out of its suffering make sure you hunt that down make sure you follow the blood and make sure you know what type of animal you shot at maybe a one star young or to a two star mature make sure you know which one it was don't go mm, which one was it again you have got to make sure that you put the right animal out of its misery so going to our lovely to start mature mo uh, mule deer we're good there we go so it wasn't a hard shot i was a little well quite high or maybe um two inches too high and round about three to four inches left but it's certainly a double long basically all the camera is phenomenal there's so much detail in this zoom in you can see exactly at basically where the bullet did spread. That is basically what you can see the outer corn of um, that bullet the bullet trajectory. Put my teeth back in. Um, so basically you can see where the bullet started to spread and then again where it starts to go back to its normal trajectory and basically hit the next organ. So right long hit, left long hit quite a lot on it and bang bullet straight out of the other side so that is definitely more than what you need to do make sure it is that engine room what don't don't be going out there this is not a sniper game don't be going out for headshots don't be going for neck shots spine shots shooting them up the backside or whatever you're doing please don't do it have ethical in the animal as what you are doing again out there in the real world you will get some point especially when you learn in the game you're going to end up with liver shots intestine shots stomach shots you will find all that out 
from that blood splatter. If you see, for example, when it says in the impurities, where it says air bubbles, it can see food particles. It can see, um, I think I've seen it say feces or um, what's the other one? Scat. So do be careful. If you see it of any one of those, you know you've hit it wrong. You want air bubbles. That's what you want. So, two-star mature, we know that is. So he was shot from 53.1 yards uh, using the 308 Winchester style monoblanc. And the overview, there is all the animal information. He was male. He was mature. He weighed 333.39 pounds. And he was, like I said, he was quite a high fitness. 64%. Would he have made, I think he may have made four star max, but I don't believe he would have made a five star animal. So basically, in a way, we've done well. So in the kill shot side, you see vital organ or artery. Um, he was shot at 17 minutes past, sorry, he was shot at 31 minutes past 5 p.m. Uh, the weather was overcast. And again, in Nez Pierce Valley uh, here in Idaho. Hunt rating, five-star rating. Difficulty, I am using the adventure difficulty. And the trophy rating being two-star, which we already knew that through the hunting sense. So, in track and info, um, he did fled, basically from us spooking him. He ran 15 yards. Track and time. That's obviously because I was talking to you wonderful guys. It was 15 minutes, 16 seconds. That's not real time. That is in-game time. Don't worry too much about that. The meat info, this is key. The least loss by shot you can get, the better. This meaning, basically, this is what damage the bullet has done to the animal. So, you know, when I said at the beginning of the video regarding the jewels of the bullet... That is what is going to be determined by your loss by shot. You shoot a wolf with the 308, bearing in, mi bearing in mind it is tier 5 rifle, but the jewels of that rifle are way too much for the grey wolf. You are going to expect a lot of meat damage. So that will be loss by shot. And as well, where you can see underneath, loss by time, if you are sitting in, for example, a stand or you are waiting for the herds to potentially be coming back to you, the longer you leave that animal out there, the more that animal is going to decompose. The decomposition will again take into fact of that you are going to lose meat. You don't want to be losing any meat, if that makes sense. You're going to be losing roundabout maybe a pound to three pounds of meat that is more than ample but anything more than that you are losing out on your selling price selling price being looking at your market price we're getting 0 0.91 we'll see a cents or pence per pound of meat so the animal weighed 333.39 pounds that was the animal weight and because we lost 3.08 pounds by the shot damage, that basically is coming out at 330 pounds, 0.31. So again, selling that at 0.91 gives us a selling price of 300 bucks or 300 pounds, depending on what currency you decide to use. So your trophy, this is quite in depth as well. This is what is used out there in the real world. You've got the length of the main beam. You've got the length of the bifurcated tines. Um, also, length of typical points, spread of the main beam, and spread of bifurcated tines. The circumference, these are all measured into basically how presentable your trophy is going to look. You are then going to say to yourself, do I want to taxidermy? This animal, do I want to put it up in my hunting lodge or do I just want to sell it and gain the in-game credits to potentially be buying new callers, new rifles? Entirely up to you. 
your choice do as what you do don't don't let anybody else tell you how you how to play your game you play your game how you want to play it just don't shoot those females unless they are mature females shoot them get them out there they're no good for breeding so we're going to sell that because i don't want that in my hunting trophy lodge um but i think i have went over as much detail in um we have the hunter right now i do thank each and every one of you guys for checking this video out if there's anything you would like to see me cover in future tutorials please do let me know down in the comments if i can get that video out of you guys i will so please make sure you guys are hitting that subscribe button please make sure you guys are liking the video as well and guys i hope to see you in the very very near future this is enough from me. This is Rory here at Rory Wellburn Gaming. I am out of here, guys. Be good, be well, and I shall see you guys very, very soon.